What is going on guys? We are down here in Houston, Texas for TX2K. We brought our R8 down from Maryland and today it's all about fun. <laughs> However, as a lot of you guys know, I'm the owner of Lisi Parts. We're a specialty automotive dismantler in Stevensville, Maryland. We deal with a ton of LSX, a ton of Coyote, a little bit of import stuff. We also deal with exotics and some other off the wall stuff. With that said, I could not resist the opportunity, being down here in Houston, to sneak away and see if we can't find ourselves a couple of wrecked exotics at salvage auction. So first thing tomorrow, we are hitting not one, not two, but three IAA salvage auctions. And with any luck, we'll be able to buy a couple and send them back up to Maryland. We're getting ready to head out in the R8 for the night, but I will see you guys bright and early at IAA Houston tomorrow morning. All right, guys, after what I'm sure you can imagine was a long night, we just arrived at our first IA lot here at Houston North. The branch manager was nice enough to have all the cars we want to look at pulled right here to the front of the lot so we don't have to go hunting around the yard. And while we're waiting for them to do that, we're going to go ahead and check out what is definitely the wildest car we're going to see all day right off the bat. Quite literally, as soon as I walked in the building, I saw this. It's highlighter green. You absolutely cannot miss it. That's right, our first car of the day is a 2020 Aston Martin DBS Super Legera. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when I first saw that this car was here at the lot, I was really excited to check it out, but I honestly didn't know what it was. I was just scrolling through cars and saw a lime green Aston Martin that looked super, super cool. So if you're familiar with these cars, feel free to fill me in in the comments. I mean, first things first, I suppose let's pop the hood here. All right, first Aston Martin lesson, there is a hood pop that releases here in the back on each kick panel, not just the driver one. Honestly, if this car wasn't sitting in an IEA garage, you would have no idea it was a theft car, salvage, anything. It is still super, super clean. We see theft cars all the time that are absolutely shot. In fact, we're gonna see a bunch today. But I guess whoever stole this car, if that's what really happened, took care of it. But as cool as this thing looks, I bet it sounds even better. Let's see if this thing will crank up. Bombs away. I mean, it's certainly not belligerently loud, but it sounds like an exotic. Obviously, we're not here to be revving these cars and really be testing them, so we can't really get a great sound clip, but I'm gonna have to go out on a limb and say this is probably a fantastic sounding car if you're actually driving one. The car obviously starts right up. There's literally no damage on this car other than a cracked windshield. So for any of you guys out there that are looking to buy nearly complete supercars like this, this is probably a good one. Obviously, we don't know what the paint looks like under this wrap, but the wrap job itself is really, really good. If any of you guys have any backstory on this, please let me know. I'd love to know more about that car. But while we wait for them to pull the rest of those cars up, I noticed a couple other cool cars just here in this indoor section. Just a casual Urus and a Bentley sitting next to each other. Unlike that DBS, this thing actually took a good whack. To be quite honest, this kind of just looks like bumper damage, fender damage. The actual frame there and the structure is not too bad. Obviously, you have that bracket bent down a little bit, but everybody loves a good Urus interior, but this thing has obviously seen better days. That's a pretty sweet color combo. It's a shame this thing got trashed. So you have a, a cracked window there. Oh, let me just stop right there. As I'm walking around the front of this car, highlighting the wreck damage, the interior condition, I uh, totally did not see these. There was a quick moment in there when I saw that glass shattered before I saw the bullet holes that I was kind of wondering, wonder how that happened. Well, so it's not every day you see a Lamborghini with bullet holes in it. So I said I want somebody to tell me the backstory on the DBS. I really want somebody to tell me the backstory on this. So if you know it, put it in the comments, DM us. I'd love to hear it. But man, they got the back glass, all the glass is shot out of it. I guess it's pretty understandable how somebody wrecked this thing. It does have a detailed sticker on the windshield. I, uh, I suppose so. We're gonna chalk this up as one of the crazier cars that I've seen 
But even given the damage, the car's not that bad. The actual wreck doesn't look terrible. You should have some bullet holes to fix. So if any of you guys actually buy this car, hit me up. I'd love to see it when it's finished and see what else you guys find with this thing. All right, here we are. They were nice enough to set a lot of this stuff up here in the front of the lot for us. And continuing with today's theme of highlighter green, we have this Mach 1. This is actually the first one of these I've seen at auction, period. Honestly, this thing does not look too bad. Kind of looks like it just ran over something in the front there. I can't really get under there too, too well, but it doesn't look like anything is crazy damaged. Of all the different type of wrecked cars we buy, the one I am honestly terrified of the most is this. I would rather the car be honestly ripped in half, the entire back end wiped, hit in the corner, something like that, anything but this. We've been burned too many times buying stuff like this that looks like it just skipped over a curb or something and having the bottom of the engine wiped oil pan gone of course sometimes at the lots they won't check for that they'll still run it and then you have a toast engine but as far as what we can see on this car from the naked eye it does not look too bad i am going to try to start some more of these cars i'm not going to do this one just because i don't want a chance at having an oil leak or something like that because of that damage and damaging somebody else's car it's fair to say we're probably not going to be in on this one there's a massive massive repair market for the new bullets the mach ones and at least at this point in time the salvage guys are kind of priced out of it but it is still cool to see nonetheless let's take a look inside i mean it looks like your typical clean mustang but honestly come on guys these seats are a letdown i'm not quite sure how you spec a car like this and then end up putting base model cloth seats in it if you're gonna go cloth with it at least make them cloth for caros as per usual pop the hood because we know that's what you guys want to see that's what i want to see all right somebody really loves their reflective tape all in all beautiful car not one we're gonna buy but still a sweet ride and i suppose we're just gonna move right down the line to this hellcat so this is another theft car again this thing looks pretty good i mean the thieves might have been in a bit of a hurry to park but you know easy fix right to be honest with you guys this car looks like it should be on a dealership lot not an auction lot you see that panel up there that's ripped off they pulled the a pillars I'm going to guess that has something to do with how they stole it because the bags aren't blown. Nothing's damaged up there. Let's see if this thing has enough battery to start. Well, there's your answer on that. No. Uh, we'll go ahead and take ourselves a look under the hood. Well, it's a Hellcat. It looks low stock. So again, this is an example of a theft car. That is just a nice one. But I promise you, later, we're going to see some ones that are definitely, definitely not. All right, we'll get to that one in a second. I want to see this thing. I saw this badge from a mile away on the auction listing, and we all know what that is. Honestly, I wish this thing was wrecked significantly harder, so it would be cheaper for us to buy. But we will definitely be involved in this thing. There we are. So this is going to be a little tricky. I'm not going to go ripping their stuff off of it because I don't want them to have to do any more work and have this thing exposed to the elements in the meantime. But I definitely need to see under the hood of this thing. And I really would like to hear it run as well. I apologize in advance for what you're about to see. All right, these cars are pretty big, not that bad. Let's see if it starts. So this one doesn't want to start. We'll see if there's anything under the hood that tells us why. So if you were one of the people who didn't know what that badge meant, who didn't know the name Hennessy, now you do. We have a blower car here. Unfortunately, like you guys just saw, it didn't start. I'd love to hear this thing run. I'm inclined to believe there's some type of electrical issue because you might not be able to pick it up on video, but down here, there is some type of electrical servo motor noise just going. These cars are rare enough as it is, and to see one that's a Hennessy car that's supercharged, oh, I mean, just as an LS guy myself, you know how I feel about it. I just wanted to take one more look over it. I will give anybody that answers in the comments that knows what this is, bonus points. 
I don't know what the bonus points are for, but at least you'll look cool in the comments. Here we have a 16 Flying Spur. I honestly know pretty much nothing about these cars. I'm not a Bentley guy. I honestly don't ever plan to own one, but I wanted to see this thing nonetheless because at some point here, we are going to dive a little further into the exotics salvage market. So I figured why not take a look. I mean, I guess if you're going to have a Bentley, you want beautiful interior, and this sure does have it. Usually, we're the ones trying to educate and entertain you guys in these videos, but today you have a chance to teach me something. Go in the comments, tell me everything you know about these cars. What do I need to know if I'm buying one for salvage purposes? Next up, before we get into one car that I was really excited to see here, we have this interesting, if you want to call it that, looking Hellcat. I actually wanted to see this car for one specific reason, and it's this. The car itself looks good, albeit a little ricey, but trying to see where they think it's a VIN switch. Well, that's easy. I don't know if it's switched or just gone, but it ain't there. Let's take a look at her nonetheless. All right, so another stock Hellcat. This one has some aluminum corrosion, but looks pretty good. It looks a little cleaner than that last one we saw. You guys have seen us do a ton of these cars. You know we're buyers on this car. So hopefully it's a good one. The only downfall about something like this is it's almost too nice. Again, a lot of these cars are just straight fixers. Guys, you know it wouldn't be a C6 Z06 without courses on it. So we check that box off. Let's see what's under the hood. Oh no, we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Okay, so a short educational segment. If you have a C6 Corvette, you can get in the hatch, but the battery is dead, the doors are locked, and you don't want to climb all the way through and pull one of the manual releases in there, you have this little guy. Yep, certified Corvette guy. Okay, so unfortunately, this is kind of the perfect example of how interiors sometimes can get damaged at salvage yards. Obviously, there's not much they can do about it. Some lots will take great care to not put body panels on expensive seats and whatnot. But when it comes down to it, they have to stay with the car. And if there's no room, this is what they have to do. Go ahead and take a look under the hood first, make sure there's no damage before we start it. Well, it looks like a stock LS7 with an intake. So this is your kind of run of the mill Z06, an intake, cat back. Still nonetheless, if you can manage not to drop a valve in the heads, awesome cars. All right, we are really striking out here today, unfortunately. This one, again, does not have any battery power. I think I'm gonna go ahead and see if they have a jump box for this one, because I would like to hear this run, being that this is right up our alley. We got our jump box on. Let's see if we can get it to start. someone who's heard all kinds of LS7s, good condition, bad condition, and really bad condition, this thing is dead quiet. There's our courses. So I really had to put my head in there. You can't really see it with that bumper on there, but that rear frame is pushed in a little bit. Not horrible, but these are aluminum, so it's not an easy fix whatsoever. Needless to say, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this car. This is our last Hellcat for this location, and this thing got crushed. We can peek in here a little bit again. I'm not gonna rip off their wrap, but. So whoever was in this thing, definitely, definitely felt it the next day. I mean, look at the quarter here, geez. So this one is right up our alley damage wise. This is the stuff we like to buy. The front of it's kind of safe. The rear's smashed. Nobody's fixing this car. That's just what it is. And while it's all taped up, so I'm not gonna hop in it, we did hear this thing run in one of IAA's run videos. The car sounds good, so we'll be in on this one for sure. It's filthy, but no big deal. Looks like we have ourselves a carbon intake there, but I don't see much else. All right, that is it as far as what they brought up, but I have one more car that I definitely want to look at here. And then there's a couple other things here that I see just from where I was standing that I want to take a quick look at. That guy right there and that guy right there. And what do you know? There is another Hellcat behind it. This is what I came over here for to check this out. Didn't see this guy. They have the hood locked shut on this one. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I thought that this was a Hellcat hood. But as you can see, this is a 392, the 6.4 NA. Does have blown bags. Did get hit in the rear pretty good here. 
This looks like your typical rear end, front end collision. Maybe somebody tapped him in the rear, pushed him into another car, but this is definitely a fixer. And honestly, probably a quite easy one. A lot of that front stuff unbolts. So somebody's gonna have a pretty nice car, easy fix here. As we've been getting more into Porsches, I have developed a significant love for these older Porsches. Once again, I don't know a ton about them. Tell me in the comments if you do, what's this car worth? I did not see this car on the auction list before I came here. Maybe it's a new arrival. And we all know old cars like this do not hold up nearly as well as newer cars and wrecks, but this thing really does not look too bad. Of course, you guys know I'm a sucker for a C6. This is a 2012 LS3. This thing's hit pretty good as well. One trouble area for these cars right here. If car gets hit on this passenger fender, there's your ECU. It's typically mounted right up under there. If you have a car with a hard hit right here on that fender, it's almost always not gonna run because the ECU got hit. With that said, if you see a car hit there, don't be too afraid of it. If it says it doesn't run, it's almost always because of that. All right, we went back inside, got the location for this car I'm trying to hunt down. They were nice enough to bring some cars up, point me in the direction of every other one. This is one of the reasons why we love to do business with IAA. We all know there's two big players in this space and we buy for both of them but we have consistent good experiences with IAA. Their run videos are awesome. That really, really helps us be educated when we buy this stuff. As we make our way over there, we see this thing. This is what, just an SRT8 Jeep. We've actually seen quite a few of these that are fast down here in Texas, but this thing took a good whack. We're not gonna spend too much time on any other car. We are on a mission. Boom, almost walked past it. This thing got smacked in the front. Rear is flawless. We've yet to buy a C8 because the prices have just been too high. They're more conducive to fix rather than part out, but they're coming down. I think we're gonna have one of these pretty soon and you might be looking at it. Again, this thing is all sealed up. We're not gonna open it up. What we'll do is just go back and heavily review the interior pictures on IA prior to bidding on this car. But honestly, this thing looks like it might be damaged just enough where we can buy it. It also comes with this pallet of parts. I don't really know what's on there. I see a door and a lot of stuff that kind of looks like it's just bad, but it's nice that they say stuff like this because this mirror is perfectly good. As you guys can imagine, seat mirror, not gonna be cheap. So when this car went to the tow lot after it was wrecked, they could have just tossed all this stuff. Fortunately, they didn't. And if you are repairing one of these things, it makes it worlds easier. It saves you a ton of money. All right, we have reached the downhill section of the lot here. I mean, I didn't know Whistling Diesel was a Texas guy, but okay. I mean, it do got expensive wheels though. So apparently it does have a cab. Oh, this is the truck. That's the cab. Don't know that I agree with this sticker, but okay. I honestly hope whoever was in this thing is okay. Yeah, this is the type of stuff that I'm pretty much never gonna buy. So if you're someone who buys something like this, let me know, what do you do with it? Honestly, is it just scrap value? Or are you hoping that like parts of that short block are good? Transmission internals, half of an American force? I don't wanna ask what you have to do to get put under one of those, but I'm gonna assume it's nothing good. I'm gonna go ahead and run back in there. Thank everybody for having us. And I will see you guys at the next lot in just a bit. That's where we came in. We're not a hundred yards into this lot and we already walked across the, I guess, the supercar section, exotic car section, expensive car section. I don't know what you want to call this, but there's a lot of cool stuff. First off, what looks like a somewhat pristine wide body Hellcat. This might be a weird question to ask, but if any thieves are watching, let me know why you guys keep popping the A-pillars on these theft Dodges. This one too is off. Though that panel up there is not completely disconnected. We have some life on this one. So this one does power up, it has battery power, but it doesn't want to start. I think that may have something to do with however they stole it. Maybe it prohibits it from actually starting the way it should. We definitely do not have to walk far to find our next wide body Dodge. It looks like this one is gonna be a Scat Pack, a 392. Now this sticker has been half ripped off, so I can fill in this one. Once again, theft, same deal. No A-pillar, that panel's off, that one's down. 
it's really interesting to be in one area like this and seeing so many of the same car that are stolen the same way. So one thing about the Houston area that was somewhat unimpressive was the lack of Ferraris and Lambos at Salvage Auction. This was the only Ferrari, period, at any of these lots. And just like earlier, we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. It's still a pretty cool looking car. It's fairly complete. Again, I don't really know what's wrong with it. Let's see if we can see this on the window sticker. Lost type other. That means the insurance company either just doesn't want to disclose it or doesn't know. It also says it doesn't run, so who knows what the deal is with this car. You guys already know where my mind goes with something like this. Clean body Ferrari, probably doesn't run, may have engine damage. No, we want to put an LS in it. We do have a G-Wagon here that is absolutely smacked. And for as cool as these cars are, I really have no interest in them. But for somebody, this looks like a fantastic rebuilder. This thing looks like it might be hit just hard enough to be halfway decent priced, but not too, too bad where you can't repair it. Yeah, unlike a lot of cars that we see, the damage on this is at least isolated to one area. The rest of the car actually looks pretty damn good. So not a ton else in this section that piques my interest. So we're gonna go ahead and walk this lot and see if we can find some cool stuff. Once again, this lot just stopping me in my tracks. I haven't made it, I don't know, 50 yards down this first aisle. We have our first C7. One car we have not done at least see parts, a base C7. This thing's hit pretty good, honestly. Maybe it'll be the first one. We have the peanut butter inside, if you will, and a good front end. So I did have a list of cars that I wanted to look at when I got here, uh, but I'm really just walking around with my head on a swivel. He bought this. As a retired JDM fanboy, I couldn't help but notice one word on the back of this Lexus. If you're not completely confused by that, you know what this means. This is the right-hand drive variant of the Lexus LS400, the Toyota Celsius. Unfortunately, no battery power. We're not gonna get our JDM fixed for the day. Well, I shouldn't speak so soon. We might find something else. Man, that is not that bad. Everybody needs to alert their favorite JDM YouTuber. Tell them that there is a very lightly hit Celsius at the Houston IAA. Somebody needs to buy this and fix it. You can fix it for, I don't know, $500 in LS400 parts. The auction sticker says it runs and it says there's a run video on IAA.com. So I'm by no means educated about where these things like to rust, if they like to rust, but man, this thing looks good. I need some support in the comments. Please tell me not to buy this thing. You don't want to see it on the channel. You don't want to see me waste my time and energy on this thing. And if you do, keep that to yourself. All right, let's move on. All right, I didn't expect to run across it so soon, but from the unexpected JDM to the expected JDM, which a certain employee, Fernando, asked me to check out because he loves these things and is talking about buying it, Toyota Dyna. Oh, yes. This is the JDM car that I really don't know anything about. I didn't even know these things existed. I thought K trucks were all small, tiny, do 45 miles an hour, and almost get you killed right out front of your old shop. This is quite literally bigger than the bed on our new Cummins. I know when you guys started watching this video, you thought I was gonna be looking at Ferraris to buy, Lambos to buy, and Vets to buy. And now it's just went completely off the rails and we're looking at $2,000 Japanese cars. She shakes a little bit when you turn her off, but eh. All right, back on road. I honestly don't know where to start on this car. I guess we'll start at the good end of it, the front, and see what we have under the hood. If you were just looking at the front of this car, you would think you have yourself a real nice TX2K Mustang. Come on, blower, 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 blower. Well, no blower, but an intact engine. Now let's move on to the not so great part of this car. This thing is one of the harder hit Mustangs I've seen. We have bought a couple like this and they do hold up pretty well for parts, but this one, again, you ain't fixing it. This should be a Brembo car based on the wing. Yep, let's take a look inside. 
And of course, with every Brembo comes your performance pack gauges there. It looks like we might have a short shifter or at least a knob. Otherwise, this interior is pretty much stock. But for all the cars we've seen here that we're not going to be buyers on, this one right up our alley. We will definitely be in on the bidding for that one. So I'm now into the back section of this lot, and it is even bigger than I imagined. Far, far, far and away the biggest lot I've ever been to. I'd be interested to see where this one actually stacks up as far as nationally. I'm not really a BMW guy, so I almost walked past this, and then I saw the wheels. Unfortunately, the insurance company did not choose to pay IAA to seal this one up, and this is what you get. The hood is also wedge closed. I'm gonna be honest with you, the car's pretty disgusting. Obviously, this thing, well out of our ballpark, but very eye-catching. So we're gonna go ahead and take a closer look. Before we do, I'm gonna need you classic Mustang guys to let me know what I'm missing in this. Honestly, let me know what I'm looking at because I don't have a clue. Well, eh. I mean, it's not a show car, but the interior is pretty clean. Oh no. Obviously, we don't have any tools here to start hacking away at this thing and get the engine open. But let's see if we can see anything under there. Well, I saw a carburetor. That's enough to tell me I have no business even looking at that car. So I just got stopped dead in my tracks. There have been, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 Cadillac CTSs here. I was strolling past and thought I just saw another one. But I kept my eye on it just a little longer and it paid off. This is what I saw. This is what I saw next. Honestly, this car is not very clean. It's gotta be a flood car. I haven't looked at the window sticker yet, but let's see. As expected, water damage. I personally don't really like flood cars. They're just nasty. Even if the water line didn't get too high, you might have to replace some electronics, a harness, and that's no big deal. But the cars are always just Disgusting. We'll go ahead and take a look under the hood regardless. So the engine bay, not horrible, but also pretty disgusting. You can see rust down there on the crank pulley, the alternator. That's not necessarily an indication that water got that high, but it was close and it probably sat for a while. Fortunately for IAA, I don't like them, but there are plenty of other people who do. So somebody will definitely pick that. All right, I'm just gonna stop what I was saying there because I just turned and saw this. This thing is twice fried, extra crispy, geez. But we know what really matters. And I think it goes without saying this car's not gonna run, but generally we've had pretty good luck with fire cars where the engines aren't touched. So while we probably won't make that our first base C7 that we ever buy, it'll probably be a good car for somebody. I'm gonna throw this in here just to pay homage to the fact that these are what got me started in the salvage game. Not specifically this generation, I was messing with the 0 02 to 07s, but way, way, way back when baby Lisi Parts was born, this is what we started. We did a ton of Subarus, and unfortunately over the years, made the decision to just leave them alone. Here we have one that is right up our alley. Good old Gen 2 Coyote performance pack with the Brembos. And as you can see, no one's fixing this thing. Okay, I did not expect this when I went behind it, but you know, I will go ahead and leave this here so you can take a look for just a second. Three, two, one, done. And unfortunately here is the car's bad side. I truly hope there was not a passenger in this. However, I do find it a little funny that you got carried away with the stickers and then decided to cover them up with this thing. This may sound kind of weird, but as a rule of thumb, one thing we've learned over the years, cars that look like that or have stupid stickers on them are always beat to shit. And over the years, it is proven to be accurate. Every time I gamble and try to buy something like that, it ends up going horribly wrong. So as you guys might imagine, one of our favorite cars, ZL1s, However, they usually do not look like this. It looks like it caught on fire and they have to cut the roof off it. So really hope whoever's in this is okay. So this is crazy. Considering the condition 
condition this car's in, somebody still snatched the blower off of it at some point. The hood obviously doesn't pop, but clear as day, there is no blower on this thing. We have actually been walking this lot for almost three hours now. I did come prepared with a list of cars I wanted to see, and we haven't been able to find five of them. So I called for reinforcements. The branch manager here, Alvin, told me to let him know if I need anything, and certainly enough, we do. He just shot me the direct location of all the cars I wanna see so we can finish this video off with some heavy hitters. Unfortunately, due to the size of these lots, it has taken way more time to cover this ground than I originally anticipated. So we're gonna have to save Houston South for another video. All right, number one on the list of cars that I had to see before I got out of here is one that's gonna make you go, that's what we stuck around for. It is a 2018 six gen Camaro ZL1. And I told you guys earlier that I was gonna show you a theft car that looks like a theft car. Here you go. Theft cars can honestly provide fantastic chassis for a build. As long as they didn't hack anything up on the frame, you're not looking too bad on a car like this. If you want to build a drag car, this is prime candidate. Yes, you would need to source a complete donor to try to put this thing back together. Fortunately, they have a couple of those here. As you can see, all of the wiring is gone, and this looks more like something that would leave our scrapyard and head to the shredder. But if you look a little deeper, you see that one, this car isn't wrecked, Two, they didn't do a bad job at all stripping this thing. Again, the thieves are very considerate down here. And three, they didn't mess up anything that can't be bolted back onto the car. They didn't cut the rear quarters. They didn't hack the roof off of it. Even that front core support, that part's bolt on. It looks like they cut this just to get the engine out to make it a little easier. But again, this is bolt on. If I were looking to build one of these, this would be absolutely at the top of the list. Because let's be honest, why buy a clean title one for 50 grand minimum that you're gonna hack up and make to a race car when you can buy that thing for, I'd have to imagine, two, three, four grand because somebody's gonna want it for the chassis. They'll pay a little bit, but it's gonna be cheap. Then you can buy a wrecked salvage one for, I don't know, 25 to 30. Combine the two, you're gonna have yourself a cheap, cheap, cheap ZL1. Number two on the list. This thing right here. Everybody I know, myself included, loves a good V-coupe. This one may have been a repo, it looks like. But most importantly, let's see what's under the hood because let's be honest, that's what we're here for. Well, other than the new era intake, looks stock. And unfortunately, the battery is dead, so we're not getting into this one. Also notes that this is a VIN switch car, just like that one we saw earlier. So that's kind of curious. Obviously, we're not really in the market for something like this. Somebody's going to fix this thing. Somebody's going to take it, do what they need to do to it, and have a beautiful daily driver. Number three, as it starts to rain, so we're going to try to make these quick, is this beautiful GT350. And of course, let's see what we got going on under the hood. Unfortunately, and this is why we like to look at cars like this in person, this wreck does not look bad. But then you see something like this, and it changes the game completely. Unfortunately, that oil cooler is broke. So needless to say, we won't be in on this one. And ugh, unfortunately, they started it. Now you can't really fault them. A lot of the people that they have in taking these cars don't know to look for that stuff. They're not gonna check every car to see if it has an oil cooler, if it's busted, if it's low on oil. They just start it because that's their job. But when they start something like this, you can kind of see where that's going. Like it's not a good thing. The engine's probably gonna get toasted. But the interior actually looks nice. Maybe this is another good candidate for a bar swap, but I have a feeling that unless somebody watches this video, they're gonna get burned on this car and pay running car money. So while this may be the fourth car on the final five, it is the number one car I wanted to come down here and see. This is the perfect example of a special car that's hit in quite possibly the worst way. So it is a coin flip if this engine is gonna be good or not. I can't wait to see. We've done one of these before, but we have another 427 C6 convertible Corvette. I believe this is night race blue. It's an ultra rare color as well. So not that that provides any type of value in the salvage world, but it certainly is cool. So unfortunately, as is common with these, the doors are locked and the battery is dead. 
So we're not gonna hassle these guys and have them bring a jump box down here for this. We did already see a run video of this car and it sounded good, but that doesn't mean a whole lot if the dry sump oil tank is wiped off the thing. It looks like your typical stock LS7. It's very clean. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what this is. If you guys didn't see this hood in one of my previous videos where I had industry garage fix one for my orange car, this is the B92 carbon fiber hood. It is a super rare factory option and it is expensive. And the big worry on cars like this, when they're hit in this corner, just as the ECU was there in that car that we saw earlier, the dry sump oil tank is here on the cars that are equipped with it. So while it does have a little residue, this thing is cracked right there. That's not the worst place to be cracked. It's much better than down there. But unfortunately, while I can't see a definitive crack, there's oil down there. So unfortunately, that means as much as I would want to be in on a car like this, it's not for us because people will overpay on it. It's just not us. I really hope here at some point I can buy another one of those things because they are beautiful cars. It's not going to be this one. All right, number five, we have another complete theft car. This time, it's a 6th Gen ZL1. Now, this one looks awesome. It's just another one of those cars that quite literally has no damage. Go ahead and look inside. I mean, again, the window's been left cracked, so it's not perfect, but it's by no means bad. And of course, this one does not have a key as it is a theft car, so we're not gonna be able to start it, but we will pop the hood. Flawless. I don't know how many miles are on this thing, but it is in phenomenal shape. But anyway, one little bit of knowledge I just gained. Alvin, the branch manager here in the truck behind me, was nice enough to kind of point me in the direction of these last couple cars and actually rode down to check them out with me. You guys saw that I didn't know what the red wrap meant on that car earlier at the other lot. Alvin just told me that that means that they are on police hold, under investigation, something like that. I obviously can't unwrap them, but I'm gonna see if you guys can guess what that one is. Put it in the comments. I know you guys can tell it's under that wrap. Your only hint is you've already seen one in this video. It just doesn't quite look like that. All right, here we go with the quickest outro ever because it is about to pour. I had a ton of fun making this video. I hope the wind noise, the weather didn't ruin anybody's experience or this traffic noise in the most inconvenient spot I decided to do this outro. If you guys did enjoy it, Give us a like, a share, a subscription, tell your friends. I would greatly appreciate it. And again, I will do plenty more of these if you guys enjoy it. This video didn't turn out to be the cinematic masterpiece that I wanted it to. Unfortunately, it's been blowing 20 knots. The drone was having issues staying in the air. And now that it's finally calmed down a little bit, it's raining. So I think on the next one, I'm gonna go all out, you know, get my Michael Bay on. But again, I do really hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun for me. If you guys have ever walked around a junkyard, a salvage auction, whatever, it's just a blast. Honestly, to me, it's like treasure hunting. Now, there are more than a handful of these cars that we saw today that we're gonna make a run at buying. Some run next week, some might run a month from now. But I will be sure to keep you guys up to date on what we pay for, which ones we buy, and of course, if we can make any money on it. But we now have to jet back across Houston to Baytown in the rain, in rush hour. So I am gonna get on the road. I will see you guys next time. Bonus points to anybody Okay, the hood just fell on my head, but all right. So before, so before, so before we, so, so to sneak away and see if we can't pick up ourselves, pick ourselves, what the fuck? Down here in Houston, and I'm here. Here's your hint. I just got, oh, there goes the hood again.